de ervaren songschrijvers van de Brill Building kregen al gauw concurrentie. Een nieuwe generatie had zijn zinnen gezet op Tim Pan Ali. Rock'n'rollers van het eerste uur die dweepten met tienermuziek omdat ze zelf nog tieners waren. Broadway 1650 had Don Kirshner, een jonge uitgever, net Alden Music geopend. Dat moest een thuis worden voor die nieuwe liedjeschrijvers. Het eerste schrijversduo dat zich aanmeldde, werd de 18-jarige Niels Sedaka en zijn tekstschrijver Howard Greenfield. Ik was heel kort, Howie was heel tall. Een heel strange looking couple. En ze uh, zeiden, waar heb je deze liedjes gestolen? Want ik zat daar en ik deed mijn kleine... Uh, number and I said these aren't your songs I said oh yes they are and Don Kirshner said oh well I know Connie Francis you must play this for her and I said ah oh, I was so excited Connie Francis the number one female vocalist in the world and I said look we got to go to Jersey and if I get a record with Connie Francis will you sign with me for five years and I think they thought I was a little crazy or whatever and they said okay we'll do that we went to Connie and I sat and played her all of my best ballads because uh, she had just had Who's Sorry Now, the number one record in the country. So I thought for sure she would do a ballad. And uh, she wasn't very interested doing her paperwork and I was singing and nobody was interested. And, and then I whispered to Howie, I'm going to play Stupid Cupid. He said, how could you do that? You promised it to the Shepherd Sisters. I said, I don't care. I'm a With Connie Francis, the number one female vocalist. I started this 12-bar blues because she liked Joanne Campbell, who was a blues singer. Stupid Cupid, you're a real mean guy. I'd like to clip your wings so you can fly. I'm in love and it's a crying shame. And I know that you're the one to blame. Hey, hey, set me free. Stupid Cupid, stop picking on me. She said, I'll take it. It's my next record. Hey, hey, set me free. Stupid Cupid, stop picking on me. Door het succes van Stupid Cupid kon niemand nog om Elden heen. Keusner verzamelde een hecht groepje getalenteerde jonge New Yorkers die even later de meest memorabele liedjes van die periode schreven. Danny Kirshner and his crew of songwriters was almost like a reversion back to the 20s where the publishers on, in Tin Pan Alley would have an office with a dozen rooms or so and in each one there'd be a songwriter, a team of songwriters grinding songs out. Barry Mann and Cynthia Weil saw the classics schrijven as Uptown, On Broadway and We've Got to Get Out of This Place. Ook zij beleefden hun grote doorbraak bij Don Kirshner's Elden Music. When we started writing at 1650, at least I didn't feel we were part of a Tin Pan Alley tradition. We were kind of the the antichrist exactly. to those people. Yeah, we really you were. Know? Yeah, we, we really kind of we didn't look down on it, but it, we, even the music was was kind of moving on. Even though we would still write at the time, still you could still get a Perry Como record or an Andy Williams record, but music was really changing, and, and in a way. We really kind of looked we down. We were the bridge. We, we always thought that we were the bridge between the old Tim Pen Alley and, and rock and roll. The environment was so energetic and so electric. So one songwriting team, man, and while we write, you lost that loving feeling. Uh, Goffin and King would be in another room riding up on the roof. Sedaka would be doing Breaking Up is Hard to Do in another cubicle. What they did was songs that really came from the heart that they felt, that they experienced. And they felt that if they could put it on paper, or the teenagers would be no different than them. And most of the songs, if you analyze it, they had a universal and global quality which everybody could relate to. In Billboard magazine, there's a page called the Hits of the World. They still have it. And I looked at the top songs in each country and bought the records and analyzed why they were hit records. There was a certain drum beat, a certain guitar lick, uh, the harmonic rhythm where the chords changed. Girls' names were very big. I took all of these ingredients and I put them together 
and I came up with... people who were just slightly older than the audience that they were writing for uh, and who saw and many of them had musical training many of them had gone to Juilliard or Curtis or places like that they had classical musical training but at the same time they loved rock and roll and they thought there should be some way of bringing this together I mean that was part of the fun of it too the fun of it was not to see music as being classical music here, Broadway music here, rock and roll music here, but to see them as all having elements that could be drawn upon. I mean, it's a kind of synthesis. This is where my classical music comes in. I was studying a Vila Lobos piece, great composer from Brazil, and there was a piece that went... I forget, it was from the Doll Family Suite. I wanted the 1625, and then in the chorus I wanted uh, a little, a, um, a, a wait, a break, a, a little break, a little wait, a little, uh, when you're making love, that pause, and then, and then the finale, you know, that just that little pause before the... Mm. <laughs> Het liedje was geïnspireerd door Niels Sedaka's ex-liefje Carol King. 